Hello and welcome back to TGTV and more specifically welcome back to a very interesting, exciting introduction. Today I'm going to be talking to you first and foremost before we get into why the Lamborghini is broken down once again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it has broken down. We're going to get into very exciting um, announcement on Insight TV. There is a new series starting called Speed Seekers and this is going to be right up all of you guys and girls, mainly guys, street. I say mainly guys, I'm not being sexist at this point, my audience is mainly guys. On Insight TV there is a series called Speed Seekers that's just starting. It's going to be starting with the first programme called Fast and Famous. I will leave all details below, I will leave all details below. But if you're into motorsport, this series of programming from Insight TV is going to be really, really, really up your street. It's basically two celebrities are coached by a racing driver and they basically have to uh, race each other around a track in their own cars and we see who is actually a better driver. We have Sol Campbell and um, I believe a, a heavyweight kickboxer in their own cars racing around a track. So that is really, really cool. I will leave the links below. We have a program called Morbidelli Rising and that is based on the rise and rise of MotoGP rider Morbidelli. Those of you into MotoGP will know exactly who he is and he is smashing it. And it was all about the rise and rise of him. We also have a series called Endurance 24 Hours of Spa and that, as the name suggests, is all about the 24 hour race at Spa, which is absolutely epic. Um, hopefully you'll be seeing some sort of um, teasers on the screen right now. Really, really cool stuff. And um, if Archie was here, actually Archie is here. He's out on the phone somewhere, but he were, his ears are pricked up at this point because he has raced at Spa. The final program as part of the Speed Seeker series is called FMX Nomads. That is about freestyle motocross. So that's your bag, get involved. As I say, I will leave all the details below, leave the links below, and you really do need to get involved with Insight TV because they have got lots of programming uh, based on kind of uh, exciting global influences and trending topics. So. Not just this series, but going forward, keep your eye on them uh, and make sure you bookmark the channel because it is uh, got some good stuff coming. Anyway, should we go and see why uh, why Lamborghini has caused me more more stress, inconvenience, expense, uh, wasted time, um, and just general general Bradman. <laughs> Bradman is that a word? <laughs> yeah, let's go with it, lad. <laughs> All right, okay. So let's pick up probably with my Lamborghini coming out of a truck once again. Hello and welcome back to TG TV and more specifically welcome back actually to a petrol station. Today is an impromptu video because today I've got some... What's going on? You right there? Say hello. hello. Yeah, there we go. So today I'm in a petrol station because uh, I didn't really mean to plan this video. Essentially I mentioned on my social media recently on my Instagram stories that the SV has gone. Now I was clickbaiting you a little bit there. The SV has had a problem recently and I will go into exactly what that is. Uh, hence you've just seen footage of it coming off a truck. That was about 15 minutes ago and I've just taken it for a run. Uh, put some V power in it, 99 Ron fuel. Uh, and I'm gonna explain exactly where it's been and exactly why it went on a truck because it's not long since it's been for service. I just spent nearly four grand on a service and it's had to go back to the service center after that. Uh, not ideal, not ideal. I'm going to go and pay for this fuel actually before they think I'm stealing it. Um, but I'm going to explain why. I'm going to go for a little run. I'm going to talk you through exactly where the SV's been because I have missed it. It's been away about a week, so not that long. Uh, and I've also had a courtesy car in the meantime, which is chaos. I'm going to try and churn a video with that this evening as well after work. Um, but I'm back in a, a Shell petrol station. And those of you that would watch uh, Drive Tribe's YouTube channel or Shell's YouTube channel will recognise this petrol station because I ran a, uh, an ad campaign with Shell, televised with Sebastian Vettel from this petrol station uh, and others. Anyway, we've got a topic. Catch up with me in a minute once I pay for this fuel and I will uh, let you in on what's happened. Look at it. It was only away a few days, but I really, really missed it. Look at it. I don't care. There is no car that looks better than that. I don't care what you say. I don't care what you show me. There is no better looking car than that thing. Look at it. It's just the best. It is chaos on four wheels. It is, it is an icon of design. Look at the side profile of this thing. It's just the best. I honestly can't get over it. And I, do, I can't see myself ever wanting to sell this thing. And yes, it is better looking than the SVJ. Much, much better looking than the SVJ. That is fact, that is not opinion. 
Look at it. There is an SVJ update coming soon. I have spec'd it and it is still coming. That said, I've just slated it, but it is still coming. So, um, yeah, that is, that is happening. But they've cleaned it at HRO in the service center. Very, very nice. But it just looks unbelievable under this light. And I've missed it. It hasn't been on the channel for a while, actually. But I just think that design is just going to look unbelievable to the end of time. That is an icon. Anyway, I'm going to get in it. I'm going to stop having it in my own car and get in the car. Ah, so here we go. And yes, there's plastic on the seats because they've... Um, because they're very respectful and they look after people's stuff and there's paper on there as well uh, again because they look after people's stuff and that is a very nice air freshener right gonna go for a little spin then uh, I'm probably pick this up in my uh, in my storage unit or at my friend's house in the car park whatever I don't even know at this point where I'm gonna pick this up but I do want to go into this because people say that supercar ownership is a uh, hassle and stress and these cars are unreliable and blah 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 um, I've not had the best of luck uh, of late um, but yeah I will explain what's happened to this, but oh, it's just so cool. It's so good to be back in here. I haven't driven this thing actually in probably two, three weeks, which is uh, part of the problem, as you'll find out. Anyway, catch up in a sec. I am now parked up and I'm now finally going to do what I said I was going to do and tell you exactly where this car has been. And Hmm? Oh yeah, I found him as well. <laughs> he's here. He's here, ladies and gentlemen. I don't know what he's going to add to this video. I don't know what he ever adds, but uh, or what I add to his I add videos. humor, I add banter, and I add humor. You, you, you said the humor thing. Okay, thank you, mate. <laughs> so the car, do you know where it's been? Yeah, it's been. It's had a problem. Yeah, it has WhatsApp, had a problem. So I had a WhatsApp message. No, I'm finished. Yeah. Um, right. I, had a, I had a WhatsApp message the other day. Yep. Saying that the car won't yep. start. Am I allowed to say that? Yeah, that's oh, fine. Okay, I'm uh, just wondering what I'm allowed to say. Um, and then, and then I, all I knew from there it was on a low loader and it was off. It was off. It was off. Okay, I'll start from the top. So you all know that there was a service on this car. Um, best part of four grand spent um, doing everything with a main dealer, no expense spared. Um, just putting this thing through every single process that it needs to go through and everything more. Um, so that was four grand. The car then came back into my possession and then sat in my uh, storage unit, should we say, uh, waiting for me to drive it for about, I don't know, 10 days or so. I'm very busy. I didn't have time to drive it after it came back from the service. I did, however, want to go out in it one evening. I don't know where I was going. <laughs> I went out in one evening. Um, uh, I went to get in the car and... No, it's getting serious now, actually. Yeah. This is the point at which I'm telling what's happening. I went to get in the car and actually, you were wrong, because it did start. The car did start up. However... No, it didn't. Well, I, you'll, you'll find out it did. Okay. It started up, but it didn't go into gear. It was just sat there, and I was clicking to go into gear, and it was just like, nope. Uh, and there was an error warning about lift, there was an error warning about uh, a gearbox malfunction, and there's also an error warning about uh, low battery as well. So, cut a long story short then, this thing, whilst it had been in service, uh, there'd been about probably about 10 days, two weeks before it even got into service, which I hadn't driven it. It then went into service and it hadn't been on trickle charge there. It hadn't been on charge. Basically, the battery just ran down. That's where I'm going with this. Um, but when the battery voltage You're just runs low. It out. Yeah, mate, I've got, a, I've got um, a repair bill to pay for, so that's why I'm making this video. Okay, keep going. Um, and I probably put the title, I probably put the price of the repair as well. Yeah. The AdSense will probably actually cover the bill. <laughs> and that is why we like YouTube. Uh, so then, when the batteries get low in these cars, and they do get low, especially this time of year, and you don't drive them much, you should always have them on trickle charge. I didn't have my trickle charger in. Um, for whatever reason, I'm just a prat. I had my cover on it, you know, it's all, it's all safe, but I didn't have the trickle charger in. So the battery depleted anyway. And when the battery gets super low, uh, it will cut out all the like, non-essentials. So I had this actually in my F12 years back. Uh, the radio and sat nav stopped working because the battery voltage got low. It kept it for essentials, which is just turning the car on. Um, but you'll find a lot of the electrics and stuff don't work. So basically the car just threw a fit because the voltage was low. Uh, so what I did, uh, I actually did get the recovery people out, Lambo Assist, they came and got it. And then uh, actually one of the blokes came down to drag the car out because it wasn't going in gear. So what we had to do is put a tow eyelet in the front of the car. Actually, I'll come down here. There's actually a bit in here where there's, you can tow the car. So they screwed something in there. Shut up! Uh, and then they actually went to tow the car out of the, uh, the storage place where it was. 
uh, with a 4x4. They turned up with a low loader with a 4x4 inside it. They drove that out and then went to drag this out. They turned the car on and actually put it into gear, which was all very embarrassing. Yeah, it is cool, it is cool. And that was part of Lambo Assist, actually. Just something you get when you buy uh, one of these cars and it comes with a warranty on it. And it's just part of the service, which is all very cool. Uh, that part of things I didn't have to pay for. There is more, however. So anyway, they got in the car, uh, went to put it in gear, and it went into gear straight away. Despite the fact the original Assist guy had come out and he can get it to go in gear. I don't know what was going on. But at that point, it had already logged an error on the dash. Um, so I said, you know what? You're here now, you may as well take the car. I want it to have a full health check, take it to HR in London. Uh, they've been very helpful, and that is where the car's been for the past few days, and it is now back with me. And it's fixed. And it is, it is fixed. Well, it was never broken, it just needed a bit of a charge, um, and it needed it all being reset because it threw a bit of a fit. Which, which, show, which shows you that it just leaves it. Which shows you that there's a valuable lesson to be learned here, ladies and gentlemen, and particularly, actually, if you have a McLaren, because drive I think... Drive it more. I think that's the lesson. Drive it more? Well, okay. Well, I'll, I'll try and work a little bit less, and then it won't get paid for, and then I'll get taken by the bailiff. So we're in quite a predicament here. Um, <laughs> the lesson here, though, is obviously drive it more uh, if you can, um, but obviously just put it on trickle charge as well. And if you have a McLaren, I think it's even worse. And I'm not just bashing McLaren at this point, um, because I think they've got lithium batteries. Um, if you let these batteries go flat too often, um, you will need a new battery. My Hurricane's never gone flat. This has been good. I've yeah, had this nearly yeah. a year, actually. And you've had your Hurricane for a year. Yeah. They have been good. Do you know what it was? It was the fact that it did go into service and it was obviously ah. sat around with the door open, um, which drains the battery. A lot of these cars, if you leave them unlocked, um, the battery does drain. And obviously it was just sat uh, with already quite a low battery, just being drained and stuff in the service center. So arguably the service center probably should have put it on trickle charge and I'm not going to name names, but um, it's not part of the process to, to do that. Apparently that's not a thing. Um, but HRN have charged it up. Uh, they put it on the diagnostics machine. They've done a full health check on the car, inside and out, physical and also electronic. Um, and yeah, it's cost me an hour's labor, which is, including that, about 190 quid. So not the end of the world, but not my ideal. My service on my Hurricane was oh, five hours of labor. Oh, well, we're not talking about service. No, no, I was just saying that warrant if you were not in, yeah, okay, fine. Okay, um, I don't know at this point. I, mean, I don't know, I don't think, anything else? I think it should end the video. I know, it's been, it's been a bit of a rubbish video, you want to see my SVR? It's all clean over here. Yeah, okay, let's go we'll see this SVR. Yeah, let's drag this one out. Here we go. Oh, you're always asking for a wrist check, so I'm wearing this today. The Tudor Black Bay Harrods, can, is that focusing? Yeah. And you've also got a bit of green on your wrist as well now, mate. Mm. Don't, yep. Yeah. Okay, oh, I like those actually. Yes. Mm. But I like this. Yeah, you do like that, there'll don't be more, you? Will there be more on it in the future? There might well be. Anyway, your SVR is here. It's looking very nice. It's clean for a change. Yeah, um, uh, I took it, funnily enough, I went to Mayfair Procedure out across uh, London in Mayfair, funnily enough, and they, uh, I just turned up for an hour and I came down and it was like, looking like this. Very Mayfair cool. Prestige. That was very nice of them. Yeah. It does look good, though, because you've left some of the gloss bits and you left the satin bits and, you know, it's all, it's I all just very think, nice. I just think it's literally the best car ever. It is, isn't it? Do I need one, Archie? Should I get one? Yeah, I think I don't think you can go wrong. No, you can't. For, for you really sub, can't. For sub seventy grand, which this was for me, um, yeah, it's, it's absolutely awesome. Yeah. Anyway, I think that's it now. Is that it? Are we done? Uh, and, and that's the tail of the Lambo. Uh, I've taken it out for a little blast. Uh, everything's fine. It, after its service as well. And Archie, you were saying this with your service and your yeah. Hurricane. After these services, they do drive a lot nicer. It sounds a very odd thing to say because they've just replaced you a bit of fluid way. and whatever. Uh, do you know the um, mm -hmm. really annoying thing is obviously when I first drove it, it was like incredible. After the service, literally like a new car. Yeah. And obviously now that it is uh, going to a new home. So I haven't had a proper chance oh, yeah. to get it properly. But I definitely wanted to get it serviced and get it amazing for the next owner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then do the whole, oh, worry about it at the time. But so now uh, that car is perfect for someone else. This is true, and also if you are in the game of sort of uh, buying cars and selling them on and whatever, and whatever, you don't want to build up a name for yourself of selling ropey cars. You don't want people to think that you're someone that doesn't look after their stuff. Uh, it's not how you've been brought up, I assume. It's not how I've been brought up. Right. Look after your belongings. Uh, look after, yeah. Yeah, look after your possessions. Yeah. It's important. You have it is to. important. And a lot of people do trash their cars, but not us. Oh, we just. Give you, I don't ah. give you. You're giving people life lessons, it's chaos. Oh no, I like, I like that, Mr. Channel. <laughs> That's what they're here for. Um, yeah. Anyway, so how much? The total was 180... 186 quid, something like that. I hope that. That's in the title. It will be in the title, Archie. It will be my cheap fix, or fix your Aventador with 186 pounds. Uh, Asterix is, here's how, or something like that. Well, we'll see what my next supercar is, and I'm sure there might be problems along the way. 
Oh, there will be. If it's what I think it's going to be, then there will be problems, boy. Okay, thank you so much for watching. Um, do subscribe, thumbs up, and I'll see you again very soon. All right? Bye, bye, bye. <laughs>